Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. conference room and I had a room reserved for 12 people and I was up to about uh, 25 before the snow started falling. Uh, so we, we should have some more people coming in here a little bit later. Uh, what we're going to do today is get to see a, a product called the Promethean Active Board. Uh, this is Melissa Witt who represents it here. Uh, and as we've already heard her say, uh, quite often their major market for this is K-12. And uh, I really feel strongly most of my attendees share a lot of common concepts with, uh, with third graders. Uh, they don't like to share. They're, uh, you know, very anxious and then they want to play with it themselves and so I think this would be a great thing for them to try. So Melissa, go ahead. Alright, thanks very much and thanks for your time. I know everyone wants to get on the road with this note. As Dick mentioned, we primarily sell this product to K-12. And so if you live in our area, North Shore School District, North Washington School District, those school districts are going district-wide with this product. Um, hopefully they intend to put one in every classroom. So, So how, how fine can you draw like the little board itself. dots and so this will be in a two font. And I think it's kind of hard to tell um, because it's really a function of the projector at this point, what you're seeing. Huh. Um, if I have a high quality projector, I'm gonna see a, a clearer image. So I, I guess what you're saying is that the the uh the resolution of the device is more than the projector. Correct. It's more than any XGA or SXGA projector. That, that's but it's out. essentially There's much more grids in there than what the projector has. So cool. it's more precise than you're on the right track. But and where you see a lot of that is, if I create a document and print it off, it prints an excellent picture. Um, yeah. For, for, for the touch sensitive part, mm -hmm. does it use strain gauges or some kind of you know matrix of, of light? So it's an electromagnetic field, and there are magnets in my pen. And oh, this, there are okay. no batteries in the pen. The pen works just like a mouse. So I can 
scroll over oh, okay. as I would with a mouse. I can mouse over if I needed to right click. If I want to left click, I'm going to just double click on the tip. And it's a, it, like me, it's not a real technical person, but if you send them to my email, I will collect them all up, give them to her, and let their technical people respond to them. And I'll be happy to do that. It's Dick Carl. Okay, I'll do my best, but, but that's absolutely right. So again, it's electromagnetic field. In my pen, there are magnets. So if I double click on the tip, it's like a left click. If I press this button on the barrel, it's a right click of the mouse. So any feature that a mouse can perform, you can use the pen for. So I can be online surfing the internet. I can do all of those things. And, and we see that application a lot in the classroom as a way to bring the web into the classroom and allow students to work together from the front of the room. Okay. So the toolbox that you see me working off of here um, there are standard tools that it, it defaults to. There's a tool store. But again, this pen controls all of these tools. So from the front of the classroom, you know, I can change the font of the pen. I can change the color. There is a highlighter tool, just like any other. And again, I can change the font. There is an eraser tool. And then there are some different clear screen options. I can clear annotations, and annotations are any marks that I make on the screen, objects, grids, backgrounds, or the page. You'll see that it's kind of a layered software. So there's a, a foreground, a middle layer, and the background. And you can select those. And then I have unlimited undo and redo. The unlimited undo and redo is nice. It'll go back all the way back to when I last saved it. And it's nice in the classroom if you're talking about sequencing or if you're working on a complex math problem. You can go all the way back to the beginning and then redo. So those are some of kind of the basic tools. And then what I'll show you, because we do typically speak to uh, K through 12 classroom. So a lot of what we're going to be looking at are ways that teachers can use this in the classroom. The software that comes with the board is called Active Studio 2, um, either for Mac or PC. And it's really a, a teacher preparation tool. So it allows them all of these tools to create lessons so that then when they're in the classroom, they can quickly change subjects um, without a lot of downtime for students to get off task. One of the things that we know is if students come up and interact with the board and actually write on the board in this case, uh, they're much more likely to retain that information. So most teachers do some kind of a warm up or a DOL. So what you might do at this point, you'd have a student come up to the room. Because it's not really a presentation system. It's, it's supposed to be interactive. It's a collaborative solution. So I may have a student come up and make corrections. And then as the teacher, I've already prepared the answer. So right away, we can start talking about things that we may have missed and the corrections we've made. The software itself comes with thousands of resources. So there are images that come with the system, different backgrounds, and we'll look at some of those. It's very simple to bring things in off of the internet or other documents, other applications that you have. But it's nice that it comes with all of these images because there are a lot of school districts out there who do not have access to the internet at this point. This is just an example of a story problem that we can create with the software. So you may have one student come up to the front of the room and write out the answer. And then you can have another student come up and use the virtual manipulatives that come with the software to represent the answer. Now money is, you know, they use that a lot. If you have kids in kind of the lower grades, they use it a lot for story problems. But now I... Is it for me to program those images? Could I make a flow chart of images that people could pull down? Is that something I have access to? Well, let me show you where I get these images okay. from. So these are the resources that came with the software. And again, it's very simple to add images. Let me just bring that up. So if we wanted to look at, let's go into elementary. Dinosaurs, for example. So these resources that came with it, I can quickly drag them and add them to the page. Right now I have a rubber stamp feature on. And I was using this for the coin. So let me go down to money.
So I'm on, let's select Mexican pesos. So I, this way I can create piles. Every time I touch the tip of my pen, I'm adding another image. But all of the backgrounds and the images from this resource library are just drag and drop. Let me clear my page so we can look at some of the backgrounds. And I could import my own JPEGs instead of just selecting those? That's right. So code snippets and uh, code chart cards? That's right. You can add any resources that you'd like. So I can very quickly add a grid to the page. These are backgrounds, so they're going to be in the, the back layer. And so when you are creating images and capturing them, you just need to let it know if it is a, a background or an image. So for students, there are just all kinds of tools. And then we can just quickly bring these across to the screen. These are handwriting exercises. So those are just some of the examples. Some of the other tools that we have, this is a map that came out of the resource library. You can see I've added these callouts. And you can add callouts to any diagram. And I can change the color or the font. So if I wanted to create something where my students can label it. There is also a handwriting recognition feature. So if I ask a student to come up and identify Texas, Now, what did you just change by doing that? I beg your pardon? What did you just change by doing that? Oh, this. This is the speed at which it's going to translate what I'm writing. If you had young kids and they take a little bit longer, you want to give them more time. Or if I wanted to uh, write a whole sentence. And right now, I'm in letters. But I can change that to numbers or a combination. And it's, or shapes. It's going to do its best to translate it. So I'm going to do that again. So then it's going to translate that and it creates an object then that I can move around the screen. So I can bring these over and label them. And it'll recognize script. Oh, sorry. It's always going to try to translate the word that you've written. If it comes up with something wrong, I simply hit the question mark and it's going to give me some other options. Sometimes you run into problems uh, if it's a personal name that it doesn't recognize. It may keep trying something that's not quite what you intended. Uh, another tool we have is a spotlight tool. And this is just another way of focusing information on the screen. This is the circular. For text, the square spotlight works very well. If you wanted to focus information, focus attention on a specific passage of text. When I push down on the tip, I'm resizing, and otherwise I'm moving it around the screen. So those are some of the tools that come with the software. We looked at some of the backgrounds. These are all resources, as I said, that come with the software. Those are the shared resources. I can also look at images that I've added. And they're very simple to add from other documents. All of the Is that a live image there of something like a PowerPoint presentation? Or would we have to export the PowerPoint to a JPEG and then put it up there? Um, I think that you would, or you would copy and paste. I mean, I can control a PowerPoint from the board if you I wanted. Do all your stuff on it? The problem is that I can, I can work in a Word document or an Excel document or a PowerPoint, but it creates a layer over the top of the document. It doesn't become a part of it. Okay. So if you copy and paste it into a flip chart, that's what we call this document, then any annotations I make, or I can change text or edit text, as opposed to just a layer. So if I'm in the resource library and I want to. So to copy and paste it, sorry for. Uh -huh. Uh, would you like take a screenshot of it and then just take Okay, it? let me show you. And then we'll go back to how we can how we can search this. I don't think that I have access I can't get access to the internet, but if I were looking at, for example, an internet page, there's a camera tool and there are a couple of options I have. I can I can select an area with points. Um, I can do freehand, a full window, or a screen. I'm just gonna select freehand so you can get a, a feel for that. So I select the image that I want to add. And I can either add it to the flip chart I'm in now, or I can add it directly to my resources. I'm going to add it to the flip chart that we're working in. 
So here it is. And if you want, I can, I can rotate it, I can resize it, I can add different actions to it. So it's very simple to bring images in. Now if I wanted to add this to my resource library, all I'm going to do is drag it and drop it. And then it's going to ask me to label it. The resource library is completely searchable. And one of the huge benefits of that in education is that you can save information, you can save lessons by standard, because it's all standards based now. So I can enter the standard, I can enter any number of keywords here. So I can call this clouds or screenshot. So that at future date, I can come back and search for that. When you say standards, are you talking about um, SCORM? Are you saying you're saving in a standardized file format? No, standards in this case in education are, you know, for example, in the fourth grade, students must be able to X, Y, Z according to this standard. Yeah. So now I'd like to let someone try the active slate. First thing I'm going to do, because I know you'll want to take over once I get that up there, I'm going to add a grid here. Okay, let's see if I can move this. What I'm going to have you do, I'll just turn the pen on for you so you can get started. Want to do a try? Now what you can do with this remote device is control the board in the same way I can from the front of the room. Okay. So as the presenter, you can be in the back of the room working off the board or you could pass it to someone in your audience. When you, there you go. So now if you started to write as my student and you started to write things on the screen, okay, I don't like that, see? <laughs> I can shut you down. The teacher, the teacher maintains control. I know what you guys do with that thing. So now, I've, I, as the teacher, I've created a lesson in advance. And look, I've co color coded the axes for you to make it easier. So and so now I'm going to ask you to plot a point. Right now, you're on the marquee select, but I'm going to switch to pen. So you're on the pen. Where am I over? I would be up here. I didn't line that up very well, so you're. Maybe you're there, right? Yeah, there you go. So it's a little awkward when you first get started. It's easier to have the slate resting flat on the desktop like a piece of paper. But it works in kind of the same way that a mouse does. You can't look at it while you're working on it, which is kind of your inclination. So it just takes a little practice to get that feel. There we go. So is there a right click and a left click then on the pen? Yes, there is. So if you press the button, there's a right click. And if you double click the tip, it is. Oh, OK. So when I wanted to, for example, launch the internet, I just double click on the screen. Yeah. Got it. Okay, you want to pass that to someone? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I'm just going to clear those pen marks. And how does this, um, how is this connecting then? Uh, it's radio frequency. Okay. So you don't have to have direct yeah, line of sight. Yeah. You don't, yeah. So you just need to push down. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. In your classroom applications, then, do you typically have, when you guys actually sell these out in there, is it typically one per classroom then, or do you have... There are a couple ways to do it. Oftentimes, yes, it's one per classroom. Um, and it depends on the teacher and the teaching style, because some teachers don't like to be at the front of the room. I think for learning disabled kids and for the young kids, it's better for the teacher to be at the front of the room, because it's confusing yeah. to have these things happening and the teacher over there. Mm -hmm. Another nice way to use it is there may be teachers who share them. So in a classroom, I may have a group here and a group there. And we can trade off back and Got forth it. so you can report your results. I don't know why I just So now, yeah, you've, now you're on a marquee select and, and you've created this as one item so that now I can move this around. Okay. Okay. So what does it say if the... What's the output like for this? I beg your pardon? What's the output? Like, can I play back the... The entire session. Yeah, there are a couple. There are a couple of options that you have. The documents that we create are flip charts, so it, it may be several pages. And I'm going to show you. So this is my entire document, kind of similar to a, to a PowerPoint, and I can cut and paste, or if I wanted to move through the document, I can do that. So this creates a flip chart. 
And at the end of a lesson or any information that we've added, I can save those changes if I want to do a save as. Uh, the other feature, there is another tool. Who's got that? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Bad student. That's my third one. Years, I told you. There's also a record feature. So I can record the strokes that I'm making. So if I turn on the record, it's going to record every mark I make in order. So then we can replay that at a later time. So usually you're just going to save the document. Um, you may want to save the work that you've added to it. Um, but yes, you can record the strokes and changes if you want to do that as well. It creates a pretty large document, I think. So if you can edit record. the strokes later on once it's saved out? Like yes. I mean, if, if, we're, if we're adding something, this is an annotation. Okay, this is a pencil mark. And even if I save it, it still is. So later I can go back someone and erase it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. I'll put you back on the pen. Thanks. There you go. So yes, we can go back later. So if I make pen marks on the page, I can go back later and erase them. I can clear them. It still recognizes them in the same way. Uh, at the end of the class, yes. if what is the method that you can share the complete class mm -hmm. uh, discussion, whatever is been represented on the board, with the students? Okay. If they have a 20 uh, student class. <laughs> there are a couple things I can do. You can see here I've got a print button on my tool, sorry. Um, and so I could simply print out the document if I wanted. I can save it as a flip chart and the board itself comes with six licenses of the software. However, there's a student version that's downloadable. So if students want to be able to open it at home and they can do some kind of basic skills, then they can do that. I can also, if I wanted to, I can save it as an HTML document or as a PDF. Yeah, so if I want to if I want to email it to someone, I might save it as a PDF and email it to a parent, for example, or a student who is out sick that day. If we want to look at the lesson. Okay, I'm moving on. <laughs> Sorry. You need to take that home to your kids. <laughs> okay. This is this is kind of like when when we were all in school and they had the overhead projectors and the teacher would put a piece of paper out to hide the information. It's kind of the same thing. And again, all of these tools are really just a way to <laughs> focus attention. But she could never do that last one if the paper always fell off on the floor. So here we go. So that's just kind of a nice tool. Some of the other kind of, we call them power tools. Um, we've got, for example, a ruler. So I, if I wanted to ask a student to measure this box, We'll draw a line. It has kind of a nice feature. You can see there's a line over the pen, and that just allows me to keep a straight line. But now for my students in the back of the classroom, you guys can't see that measurement. So I can magnify it and move it around. So you can see that application for students in the, in the classroom. Because students now, we know, are for the most part visual learners. You know, they've grown up with computers and video games. I can rotate the ruler and you can see as I rotate it that the numbers stay upright and it also is providing me with a degree of tilt. Is there any way I can capture audio of a presenter at the same time this is going on? Um, that would be more function with your computer, yeah, if you had an audio system you could do that. Not through the board itself. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a pretty key point because I mean, if you can integrate audio with this with the timing of the things you're doing here, you make the you give the lecture once and then let it run the next hundred times. Yeah, replay it. Yeah, I don't think that this solution has that feature at this point. That may be something down the road. Well, it, what you could probably do is something like a Camtasia, I bet, or a Robo uh, demo, something where it actually kept copying the screen over and over. I don't know, but if you could get that to run on top of it, it might. So this is, of course, a protractor, and, and it works in the same way, except that I can identify an angle and then zoom in. And again, if we want, we can. Some of these tools, like a, a ruler and a protractor, they're very hard to teach from the front of the room for a teacher, because it's hard for the students to be involved. But with this tool, of course, we can do it all together. Well, let me add all this 
one. So this again is the camera tool that works well as an editing tool if I wanted to identify just a portion of the image and then bring it back to the screen. I can do that. In classes you can use that for um, creating puzzles, but most often I think it would be to bring back pictures from other documents or from the website. There is a dice tool, which is nice for, I know people say, can you play blackjack? Perhaps? No, no, they don't have those options here. But it is nice, it, it's a random number generator. So then if we wanted to create random numbers, we can do that. Let me show you. So you saw how we can bring back images from the resource library. Let me look in my, so I have a mariner's moose here. Any object on the screen, and, and this is something I just brought in off of their website. As I said, you can resize it, you can rotate it. Um, I can use the plus and minus. The software understands if I have text here, it would give me an option at this point to edit the text to add information or change the font or the size. Some of the other things that we can do, make sure this is turned off. By going to the properties tab, Here's where I can change the identification. I can change the appearance, and a lot of this is the layering. But I can also add actions to any object. So what I could do at this point is I can hide, so you can kind of hide things behind an image if you wanted. So if I wanted to put this in the corner of my document and when I click on it as a teacher, I go to the Mariner's website, we could do that. Um, I could also have an object that when I click on it, it turns the page. So there are all kinds of features. We can also play a sound. Let's see if I've got an animal here. So now when I bring my cursor over, you can see there's a little kind of funny arrow. That lets me know there's an action. <laughs> but so that quickly a teacher could add this. Now I've just added a sound that came with the resource library. But what, what can be very powerful if, for example, I had an image of Rosa Parks there and then when I click on it, it's going to either jump to a website that talks about Rosa Parks or I could play a speech or a video clip at that point. So very simply you can add actions. And I have to turn it off so I can get rid of him. There are some shared activities that come with the software. And what if you have multiple actions associated with a, with a given object? I think for the most part you could either do one thing or another. Okay. I mean, what, what you may want to do then would be to layer another object beneath it. Like so, buttons, for example. Okay. Exactly. So there are some shared activities that come with the software. You can create these if you use Flash. I can't, but you probably, you all probably can. Um, let's see some of the other tools that we have. There's a uh, ticker tape option, so we can change any kind of messages here. Show you. Excuse me for cutting in. Uh -huh. I, I can't help. Please do. Okay. Please stop me and ask questions. I mean, how many people felt good when they heard that applause happen? I actually felt good, <laughs> right? And to me, that shows the power of virtual, you know, virtual reality, right? And and you know, automated stuff. 
they can really, you know, help with the. Uh, I'm not getting a commission or anything like that, but you know, <laughs> they, uh, they, they, they can, you know, really take the place of what a human being used to do and would have to expend a lot of energy and effort doing. You know, we can put these. On, I mean, you know, in, in V3 or whatever of, of this thing, we're going to have, you know, robots or pre-recorded things that are really going to get the student engaged and keep them engaged that you know i felt good hearing that applause and i can i can feel good seeing a, 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 a substitute teacher up there on the screen so you can take a break kind of thing right well uh, particularly a lot of the activities and the pre-created games and lessons we see a lot of students use those there are a lot of students who come into schools for um the free breakfast and so are there before school or at recess so those are a lot of activities that students can work on independently and they are very excited to work on the board um, we were at North Shore yesterday and we went to a, a few classrooms at a, an elementary school and those kids they are so excited they're raising their hands raising their hands everybody wants to come up and write on the board and it's easy for them a lot of times you know teachers are a little more resistant to technology so we've seen where we bring it in a sixth grade classroom and if you have a really great teacher then they let the students kind of figure it out and teach the teacher we're going to the votes that's what we're doing now so class if this was a regular lesson we may be talking about today classifying animals so if I'm a teacher typically what we might do we might brainstorm some ideas so what classification is the cat See, this is typical, huh? No one's answering. <laughs> no, nobody wants to write. Oh, come on, Jimmy. Maybe you can help me here. Uh, ma'am. It's a ma'am. And the alligator. Reptile. Reptile, OK. And what are some of the characteristics of a mammal? Reptile. Mammal. Well, let's, let's say, um, how about live birth? Um, Warm-blooded. Okay, so we've done this lesson together and we're talking about mammals versus reptiles. And I want to find out how much information you've retained. Do you get it? Is it time to move on? These devices, the active vote, can be used as an assessment tool in terms of testing, um, but that's really not how it's intended. What we understand is that if you incorporate assessment into the middle of the lesson or the lecture, that's really how, at that point, we have immediate feedback and I can either move on or reteach or refocus my discussion. So I'm going to ask you, my students, you've got votes. Here's my question. The Kappa Bear is the world's largest living. Now to start a vote, I just click on this tool. Now go ahead and select one of the letters. Anybody else need one? Okay. Oh, I thought I passed oh. them out. Okay, I'm going to stop that. We'll re-vote here. Oh, these are little And afterwards, they run your personal video recorder real well. <laughs> <laughs> so you press the button. Okay, so go ahead and vote. Answer now so you can select what you think is the right answer. Now, this is anonymous, but in the classroom, I may decide to either have students' names showing here, or I can still have this anonymous but be recording their names. So, how does you have to hit the register after you write? You do not. Okay. Just press the, the letter. That's the initial registration when I tell the vote that's working with the board. Okay, so we're finished. I registered all of these when I came in, so it's telling me not everybody has answered. Do I want to allow them to retry, and I do not. This is a very sorry situation. This tells me as a teacher that I am doing a very poor job. So I have my result and the correct answer is C. 10% of the class got C. So at this point as a teacher, we can talk about why the capybara is probably not the world's largest living mammal. <laughs> but it, again, it's immediate. And we can talk about it, and we can revisit it. And you can bet if the students are allowed to vote and, and give their or give their opinion, they're going to remember. And yes. This is so cool, because whereas before, you just have one smart student saying, ooh, 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 Every time. giving all the answer, and you keep moving, keep right. moving, keep That's moving, right. and 90% is left behind. That's right. So Dick, in the back of the classroom, doesn't raise his hand. I don't know if he's sleepy or he's shy. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah. Is he getting it? When I find out, typically, is when we take the test, right? 
And so now, that's not how we're teaching anymore. We're trying to revisit it as we go. So this is telling me the correct answer. If I, if I had entered your names, and I would just import an Excel spreadsheet with your names, these would be names, and it tells me who answered what. One of the other nice bits of information that it's going to tell me is response times. Because Jimmy may get very excited to get to use the votes and answer almost immediately, and I can see that, that he's getting it wrong, he's not reading the question. And there are a couple options I have. I can time the vote. I can allow students to enter answers as many as they want and take the last response, or I can allow just the, the first response that they give. And then I can paste these results to my page. So now it's a part of my document. So that when I save it, I can save this information. Or when I'm finished, I just export it to an Excel spreadsheet. What's the maximum number of these that you can do? Um, they come in a set of 32, but you could have 64. Mm -hmm. So this just kind of talks about some of the searchable um, resources. Would anyone like to come up and try working on the board? Get a feel for it. Come on up. <laughs> so you will notice right away that you've got to stand off to the side. But again, with a ceiling mounted projector, it's not so bad. And to change tools, you're just going to select it. Right now, you're on the pen tool and you're in blue. In blue? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, today, class, we're going to talk about geography. Okay? We're going to talk about water. Who knows how many different kinds of water there are? Now, if I was really a teacher and I'm using Active Studio, what I would have done is brought in a, a video clip from Discovery Education and I may have downloaded a map from a website, so that we have all of that information in advance. There's frozen water and snow water. That's right, there's also hot water and vapor water. <laughs> so we can talk about gases. Deep water and shallow water. Matter and gases. I've got a lesson on matter and gases we can look at. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, as a teacher, I like it because I like to know what my students are thinking, but my students like it because then they get to register a response every time. Yeah. Well, and I was just saying, because like when you're young and impressionable, you sometimes are a little, you don't want to speak up. That's right. Students don't like to because it's not comfortable for them. That's more the junior high crowd, but yes, exactly. Well, that's why we use these Big pardon? I deal with higher ed, and that's the same reason we use those systems. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, particularly when you get when you're working with adults, they don't they don't answer. Nobody wants to seem foolish. Well, the classic one is our presenters will present some exceedingly complicated thing on a PowerPoint and say, "Does anybody not understand that?" And nobody in a room of five thousand people is going to raise their hand. Yeah, right. Right. No, but they could have A, yes, and B, no, and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. How many people got what I just said? Boom. Yeah. Now, in in a kind of Microsoft world, right now, I've passed out the votes, but there's also something called Active Vote VR. It's a virtual voting. So, if you have everyone had a laptop, we could load the software onto their laptop, and they can do the same thing. We use a hub. You know, as long as they're connected through a network, How then you, they could all vote. On that? Yeah. I'm not sure. It's a new product, and you know we don't have many districts in our area because they don't. You know, most right. schools don't have We're a laptop. I'll that up to my last question. We're thinking about like, like for uh, sessions where our team needs to do have laptops with them. It'd be perfect. That's right. It is a it is a nice way with without having to pass out these votes. Yeah. Everyone's got a laptop. Mm -hmm. How many of you guys have been in a meeting and people start throwing around TLAs and you don't know what the heck yeah. they're talking yeah. about? Yeah. You know, I like to have a button, boom, totally. you know, just zap them. Right? Jargon. <laughs> Without being the idiot of the fool who raises his hand, oh, I don't know what you just said. Huh? Who's that? <laughs> so true. So the assessment part is nice, and the nice feature about this kind of vote is that it is a radio frequency, so you don't have to be real close by. You can be 30 feet away and be voting. Or you can hide it in your coat if you don't so want to. So is it something, yeah. let's say you were in, you know, for an event like we're planning, you might have, let's say, 100 sessions, and you, from session to session, can you register in each session you're in that will associate your vote with that? That course, so meaning like if I'm in, if I have, let's say I have this device or my laptop, and I'm taking it from class to class, basically, and I want to be able to engage in the class that I'm in, is there a way, is that what the register button is for? Or when I, when I first get started, I, we register all of the votes that we're going to use with this board and my laptop today. So if you were going into another room, you would have to re-register. How oh, is that process? No, it takes no yes. time at all. Okay. No. So is that I just tell it, let's register, and everybody presses their button. Oh, okay, great. Or, or as a teacher, I press them in advance. Now, if we're doing a named mode, 
I've imported an Excel spreadsheet with all of my participants' names. The list comes up and it's going to give you a three-digit code. It's going to say like ABC next to Jim, ABC. So he has his egg, he enters ABC, then the board knows that's who he is. And when he votes, it's going to register his response and associate it with his name. So basically at the start of the session, they go in and you can say, let's register, everybody clicks it on their machine or on their egg and that's right. they're associated with that. What's the up and down arrow? Is that just yes and no? Sending and receiving. But yeah, you know, when you when you enter your response, it's going to initially flash red, and then you'll get it'll flash on the green. It's just letting you know you're registering your response. A, I think there might be an issue with what you were just talking about um, with the registration thing. Yeah. I can only presume that the reason that you have the registration system is that so you press something on your machine that says I'm now open to registrations, right? Right. In a situation like what you're talking about, where you have multiple sessions going on, and they're all starting at the same time, and they might all register at the yeah. same time. So they'd have to use a code where they could you say, do, you'd type, a in, okay, they you'd type in, essentially type in the session code, and then they... If, if, for example, I mean, there's a distance yeah. issue, okay, so somebody across the building or two rooms down are not going to pick up the signal from these votes, but there are many channels, so I might set up, when I'm setting up my conference, I may set up this board as board channel number one next door, maybe channel two, so that, you know, that doesn't happen. Okay, and you have to, like, press that in? When that would be something that I would do here at the front of the room. Let's, well, I'll show you how. So what prevents me with accidentally registering with the person who's right on the other side of the other wall who has registration open at the same time? Does your system have a, a method of self Well, what we would have to do if you're very close by, if you're working, if there's another board here, for example. So I might say I'm on channel two and this board is on channel three. Um, you know, because we've got about 30 feet, you're, it's not likely that you're going to get any overflow, but what I may do as the presenter is come in first thing and register. I mean, I, I guess it's possible if we have two boards side by side and we're both registering, but I think it's unlikely. It's unlikely. So if, for example, I'm going to remove all of my votes, yes, and I'll show you how we register. So if you just go ahead and press that center button down until for a few seconds, just hold it for a few seconds. Now it's registering you. Okay. I think I've got you. So now they've been registered. And at this point, it says device name A123. So another option that I have is if I wanted, I could put a sticker or write on this a number so that this person is number one. So yes? The easier way to do that might be leave the votes in the room, leave them registered to the machine. and number them or something. Um, could I do one registration where everybody over here registered and these were the smart guys and then register everybody over there and they're the dumb guys? Like if I want to have two groups or something, is there any way to register in segments? Or do you have to pretty much register anybody who has an egg in your room? You pretty much have to register anybody who has an egg in your room. And probably if you're trying to differentiate, you would have it in named. Okay. So I would, I would tell you, or maybe all the smart people enter codes, you know. Okay. What I'm thinking of is like I'm a developer with more than six years of experience or I'm a brand new developer or something that we'd use. Oh, I see. Because the feedback I get from you as a presenter mm -hmm. means different to me if you're a newbie than if you're an experienced old hand or if you're a Java guy or an Apple sure. guy or something like that. I'm thinking if there was some way I could segment people in a big room. I think the only thing you could do would be to name them so yeah. you know who's responding. Okay. Or the Java guys would give me the exploding egg. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of, uh, well, the Apple guys, this interface would be too complex. Exactly. <laughs> Outside of Apple or classrooms, what other applications have you seen this being used in? For the most part, it's it's K through 12. Um, there is sort of an expanding presence at the university level. Mm -hmm. Most often, at a university level, we market a product called the Active. It's an Active Panel, and so it's a screen, a large screen, and I can do all of the same things just like I would the board, but it's table mounted, so I could be off to the side, and it would just be projecting. It's different than, you know, anyone can connect their laptop um, to a projector, but the nice feature there is that, again, you can use the pen tool, you can annotate over it. So we see a lot of that. Um, when there are applications for business, it's mostly in, like, training and development. So if you're doing any kind of internal training. Yes? So if I, if I had a picture of my PowerPoint slide 
up on the screen and I had five bullet points. I can walk around the room with this and annotate it and, and, and zoom in on things and do all of that from any place in the room. That's right. Okay, how far? Can I do this in a 2,000 person room? Can I get that far away or? No. No, that's got a range of like 36 feet. Once okay, again, so pretty much all over on a stage. Classroom. Classroom. We can't okay. put like receivers all over the place? I don't think so. I, I know, I'm not at this point. Something about one of those big orange extension cords coming out. <laughs> okay, so but a presenter could do that, could and then there, to go to the next image, they'd open up that little thing on the left and drag the next image in. They couldn't really do a PowerPoint flip. Okay. If you had a PowerPoint, you can control your PowerPoint with your mouse, can't you? Yeah. Same thing. So I could be moving through the PowerPoint with, because this, you, you really have to just think of it as the mouse, not the pen. Okay. So you can annotate over it, okay. Mm -hmm. Can you pull up a PowerPoint there and let me play with it? I don't have a PowerPoint. Oh. <gasps> I know, is that pathetic? I don't have that. Okay. I so you're going to let me keep one of these for about a month so we can play with it, right? I'm going to send you one so you can. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> this one's a little beat up. You can see I've dropped this one in the parking lot and broken off pieces. <laughs> we'll get you PowerPoint then. I beg now, I'll give you a PowerPoint if you give me one of those. <laughs> no, I don't need the PowerPoint. See, that's the thing. I got it here. <laughs> yeah. So with the handwriting recognition, um, again, you can add things to a Word document. You can add text, or you could um, add it to an Excel document. But it doesn't work very well. It's kind of an arduous way to do it. I promised people till about 4:30. So why don't you wrap up and get okay. some contact information and all that good stuff for the uh, for the archive that we're taping. And then if people want to stay, we can certainly stay in the room and play with it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, well, again, it's Melissa Witt with Ernst Communications, uh, www.ernstcom.com. My number is 425-328-6785. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> okay. I don't like that kind of voting. <laughs>